What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm James. I'm a software engineer who's been working on full stack mobile apps for the past few years. This week we're jumping back into the series where I take you guys through building an app from start to finish. So I want to take you through the idea to the app store. And the app we're talking about today is my AI finance app, Finch. So first it's Saturday here and I'm gonna go to a co-working space with my girlfriend and my puppy and we're gonna get some work done. Last week I designed the app and for a quick refresher, I'm keeping it simple. It's a AI finance app that's focused on budgeting paycheck to paycheck. So it's not gonna be a total overview of your finances like the other ones out there. This one's focused on just your paycheck. I kept the design simple because we're kind of on a two month time crunch also because we're trying to finish it in time for a Google competition. Today though, I plan on getting a lot done. I wanna build out all the UI components. I'm gonna use fake data for now, but I plan on knocking out authentication, building out these components, and I have a call with my co-founder who's doing the backend side of it. We're gonna to try to get things synced up. To start, I'm gonna use Superbase for authentication and the database. So typically I use Firebase for my backend, but since this is gonna be transactional data from your bank accounts and you know all your spending, also we'll be using Plaid for the API for the financial data. And that data just makes more sense in a relational way versus the NoSQL structure. If you haven't heard of it, Superbase is actually a relatively new Firebase alternative. It's really cool actually. I didn't really jump on it right away because I had no problems with Firebase. But when I found out that it was SQL and not NoSQL, I was excited to try it. But they have great docs and also a good YouTube channel. So authentication was super quick to get working. Now I'm gonna focus on building out the components. I'm gonna be pairing up with my buddy ChatGPT here. I find that AI is super helpful for building out widgets and UI components. It, it does a really good job with that, with taking an image, like let's say you upload a design to it, and then spitting out the code for it. It doesn't do so well with working through complex logic. So that's kind of how I use AI with my coding, is I use it primarily for just building out UI components. But it got me a really good start. The components are all pretty much built out. I'm using fake data, and it doesn't match the style yet, but I can click and expand and collapse these components which is what I want, you know. Doing that in one view with growing list sometimes can be a pain with Flutter, so it worked out pretty well. Something else that was done today was I architectured out the backend calls, so I created all the data sources, all the repos, and the use cases for when I set this up with my real API. That way I don't have to do all of that work later on. So this is all flowing through the full flow it's just fake data. I'm using clean architecture for this app. I'll also link a video below for that if you haven't heard of it, but it's the new architecture pattern that I've been using for all of my apps. I also use it at work, but yeah. So with that, it's architectured out and I got a lot, I made a lot of progress on building out the UI and it's just in time because now I wanna meet with my co-founder. We're gonna make sure that I'm, we're on the same page with, you know, how the front end and the back end are gonna to talk to each other. I need to know what the API is expecting me to send, and he needs to know what data I'm expecting back and what format that is. There's gonna be some transformation of data here. So we're gonna talk about, you know, who's gonna do that? Does it make sense for me to do it on the front end or does it make sense for him to do it on the back end? Sometimes it's, it's better for us to do it on the front end, but a lot of times I found that if I can just handle any kind of complex transformation of data on the back end and just spit out the data to the front end. It's just cleaner and faster and typically the load times are much smoother for the user. Another thing I typically like is I would like the back end to be done first. That way I know what I'm expecting. I know what data is gonna be there, but we're on a two month time crunch here and so we're working in tandem. So to do that, we're just gonna have to communicate a lot. I work for a startup, so I'm actually used to that flow. At work, for example, we have a big feature we wanna push out, 
and we don't have the luxury of a lot of time. So we'll literally be building a feature with front end and back end at the same time. And there's sometimes a uh, back and forth and sometimes things change and, but it's a, it's a learning process. So that's what we're doing now. So far it's going good. We'll see how it goes. That meeting went well. We got a good plan on what we're gonna do next. And I was able to make a successful API call and get some data back. So I know that works. Um, so now I'm gonna grab some food. It's been a while and then I'm gonna jump back into it tonight. Now that I ate, I'm gonna finish up the, the development and get it to match the design. I'm actually really excited about this project. I'm not the best with managing my money. So this one really hits home for me. I'm gonna focus on building something that helps me solve my problem and hope that it helps other people. By focusing on per paycheck, it's more manageable. It's not like a whole month of transactions I have to look at. I don't have to plan for a whole month. I can just plan for this two week period. And all I need to do is focus on making that safe to spend bucket of money not go to zero. I really can't wait to use this. So I'm hoping next week, that's what we talked about with my co-founder. We're gonna try to get out a version that's small, but that we can link up our real data with and then start using it you know, while we keep building out all the other features. That way we can find bugs and find the things that we don't like and then make changes and then double down on the things that we do like and maybe even build the app more around those. We'll see though, I might hit a roadblock. Sometimes that happens. Right now it's smooth sailing, things seem good, but I might get stuck on something dumb. You never know. That's what happened with Intently. I got stuck on authentication. But that's it for this vlog, guys. I got a lot done. I worked on getting the, the code for the design, building out the UI components, met with my co-founder. We got some API calls working. And then I also, a little bonus, I got Plaid set up. So now the user can actually link their real bank account. So that'll be much easier transition to next week when I wanna now pull in real data and start using the app. But please don't forget to like and subscribe, comment below. It's encouraging to see the comments, makes me feel good, makes me feel like I'm actually putting out some videos that you guys like. And I also wanna hear feedback on what you think of the app, any good ideas you guys had. Some people had some good ideas on how to monetize it last week. So I'm looking forward to reading those. Peace.